Welcome back to Any Relation to the Crisps. I'm going to give a disclaimer straight away and apologise if there's any bonfire sounds going off. It is 5th of November, and if you remember, that's the sort of night where people like to make it difficult to record podcasts. So I'll persevere, but if you hear any low sort of explosions going off in the background, please don't be alarmed. I'll be safe and well. Uh, this is Any Relations with Crisps. It's um, usually pronounced better than that, but essentially it's a collection of my experiences that I had in the year I took out of university as part of my degree to run a business for for 12 months and then return back to finish the degree. So I'm Owen Seabrook. I do a film course at the University of Leeds. Leeds puts on a, a programme called The Year in Enterprise similar to a year in industry where you work at work placement for a year or um, a study abroad year where you just go and study in a different university uh, somewhere in the world. The year in enterprise is a much lesser known module that is um, a lot smaller, four people a year do it at our uni and you do, um, you, you run your business. So you have a business plan and you carry out your business very brief backstory because I don't want to start every single episode telling the the whole origin. But basically, C Rent Media is my uh, design agency. Um, we make videos, photos, um, really bad elevator pitch, isn't it? Uh, no, we we produce video content and marketing content for for brands in Leeds. Um, I started it when I came to Leeds, or just before. Um, initially, as a mark of my freelancing and 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 a sort of trading name for anything that I would work on but it eventually became a bit of a larger thing and then by the time my third year of university came which was my year in enterprise I was sort of training wheels were off so again this is an experience this is a, a an experiential account of all the things I got up to in this year for anyone who's wondering what it's like to run a business how hard is it really what do I need to know listen to all of this and you'll find out so this episode as it's called in the assignment that I submitted to summarize this year up is called Owen infiltrates the secret circle because I had been writing this assignment for about 16 straight hours and got to the point where I wasn't taking it so seriously anymore um basically so we're in September so New York's been Korea's been I've built the computer we're up and running ready to start taking calls and things um just sort of spinning a few little projects and i get an email or rather a message on linkedin and this is from a guy who i've met once at a um a a networking event where i went and did uh, my headshot pop-up headshot stand which i'll talk about in in a later episode um he was a nice guy we met he did one of the headshots so he's still got my headshot as his profile picture on LinkedIn he said um, he's going to an event soon a networking event I should say he messaged me earlier than this probably in around August before I went to Korea or it was just before I went to Korea and he said do you want to hit any networking events together be good to catch up I was like I'd love to but I'm literally I'm about to go away for two weeks so so let's talk after that so September comes along and he says I I messaged him I've, I've said to him um sure so what about that network and then do you want to do something and he said yeah well if you want to come as a guest to my uh, networking group i'm a member of um then you can be sort of my visitor and and we can do that and and i'd you know he said something like it's my presentation as well so so it'll time in well um and i said yeah great sounds good now as for most of the networking I have experienced, it's generally pretty agendaless in that you go and, you know, you might have a drink and you just speak to people you bump into or there might be stalls exhibiting and you just come and chat to them. It's more a way of finding out who's who and meeting people for the first time so that you can remember the names for later on because you're bumping into people all the time, especially in Leeds because it's not a massive city and the, the the sort of entrepreneurial communities are pretty well well woven so most of the networking i've been to um has been these little sessions where you come in and there might be like you know up to like 40 people 
and you just sort of make your way around, shake hands until you feel like it's time to leave. This was different. So, there's a, a group, um, or a company I should say, there is a company that runs pay-to-join networking groups. And the model is, there are groups taken up regions of the UK, so you might have like, I think I, I think this one was like the Yorkshire and Humber group or something, if I remember. I might be totally wrong on that. Um, but there are only allowed to be one member of the group. There's only allowed to be one member of the group from the industry. So you can't have two um, mortgage advisors in the same group or chapter as they're called so I went to this this thing and it was really early in the morning it was at like um, probably like half six in the morning in this hotel because it's a it's a before work networking thing and it was on a Friday so it was like people would go and then go to work and it was in a hotel and, and you go in and you have like a bacon butty and a pan au chocolat and introduce people but you've got like name tags and it felt very strange because everyone was like everyone I met handed a card to me straight away and it was very like I am this person I do this <laughs> it was like okay all right um and I was I was stressing a bit because I'd, I'd come sort of ready to to network but then we all sit down and it's like very weird like the, the, the meetings being conducted like there when i said before networking is an agenda doesn't have an agenda this literally had an agenda like there was someone reading through the minutes of this um event and everyone was sat at their seats everyone had to get up and do a business pitch including me which i wasn't prepared for so i like bumbled some rubbish out um but like everyone already knew each other, so they were all pitching. They were basically reminding each other, and this was a weekly thing. They were all reminding each other every week that we are, we are X Y Z. We do this. So it was strange for me. And then the guy who invited me um, got up and did this presentation about what his company does and how he's valuable. And then at the end, he goes, "And the companies I'm looking to target are da 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 da." And I was like, "That's a bit, that's a bit open." isn't it to, to say like the companies I am targeting are the the clients I would like to make the customers I would like to make you got to understand this was all completely new to me but for a lot of businesses this is very normal so if you ever hear of anything called like um like a business breakfast group or anything I, I, I don't know whether I should mention the name of this company because I'm sure there are other companies and it is a very common name but I feel like just on on the side of safety I should uh, away from it like I should not so I'll, I'll avoid mentioning it but it's a common idea like it's not the only one there is so these guys would meet every week present to each other and then there was this other weird thing which is you have to bring a contribution so the contribution has to be you have to bring a visitor i.e. me so I was fulfilling this guy's quota for the week um, you have to bring a visitor a visitor you have to um do something else but they were like the sort of the the less popular options the main option was you bring leads for another business in your group so you have to turn up with a lead and then in these <coughs> pardon me in these business pitches they would go around the group and when they were introducing themselves they'd say we do da, 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 da. today i'm looking for meetings with this company, this company, this company, and people would be writing it down. So the point of the group is that everyone gets to be the the only person in that group. And then everyone in the group has a shared responsibility to find leads for that person, which is bonkers, I think. But here's the thing. Some businesses work really well and, and use it really very well um, because every single person who owns a home needs a mortgage advisor, right? Every single person, um, you know, who has like 
a toilet needs plumbing and there very often are these very sort of like b2c businesses there um and i remember there was a few like legal type jobs and finance type jobs and, and stuff like that business coach do you know and i get up and i'm like uh, do social media packages for people and of course no one cares at all because <laughs> like it's just some kid visiting come in probably gonna leave soon like that's the thing as well the turnover of these groups typically is pretty high because like i say you have to pay to join it's like a thousand pound or like 700 pound plus VAT or something to join um and you're only allowed to miss like two sessions in a year and the weekly which is like what the hell and it's all this idea of um you know, let's all band in together and we'll all do our bit for each other and da da da. But there's a lot of holes in that. Now, my brother said something to me which has stuck with me for years, right? We went on holiday in 2013 and we were in um, Niagara and we talked to this lady in, in the hotel we're staying at and we said, Where's good to eat? And she goes, there's this great restaurant around the corner. The Summit 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 is delicious. My daughter works there. And we go there. And it's like, okay, it's like an Italian, but it's like pizza and calzones and pasta and stuff. But, but I mean, I, I, I didn't pick up on this because I have absolute, I, I literally do not care for fine dining. I, you know, I'll, eat a, I'll eat the greasiest burger. Don't worry. Don't worry. So I'm not by any by any means like a snob when it comes to restaurants or anything like that. But my mum and dad were like, that that wasn't great, I don't think. And my brother goes, DTA. And I'm like, what? And he goes, because me and my brother have this sense of humour of being like very dramatic and being very blunt with each other. So he goes, oh, and there's one rule of life. <laughs> DTA, don't trust anyone. And then he adds he adds to that, actually, don't trust any... No, he says, like, um, DTA, don't trust anyone, but especially DTA, WVI. <laughs> it was, like, it's absolutely not a, not a catchy name, but he goes, don't trust anyone with vested interest. And it stuck with me. It's always stuck with me. And it's rung true, because if someone's selling something to you, there's a fair chance that they've got a reason to do so that doesn't necessarily lead to uh, a, an honest review, let's say. So this lady was sending us to a daughter's place, daughter's restaurant, vested interest. Don't trust her. Don't trust her. Does someone Is someone you love trying to say something to you to get you to do something? Don't trust them. Don't trust them. They're manipulating you. No, I'm joking. But you got to be wary of this sort of thing because there's usually stuff under the table that you, that you don't know about. And as well for like something like this where it's like, what, so I pay to join and then I have to do work every week in the hopes that someone will do it for me. It's like, what? So I left the, and actually before I get into that, so I was speaking to um, a few people the after the session and they were like, yeah, honestly, I don't know why you wouldn't join this. I, I, seriously, you know, there was a guy who was doing like web dev or something. He was like, it, it, it honestly, mate, it would not make sense for, you, for for the cost. It wouldn't make any sense at all. Like, really, really selling this to me. The guy you led the chapter was this very rich guy. He swore by it, and he got up and he was like, "I love this. I love this company. I love the feeling in this room." Da, da, da. I my business has tripled in in whatever, and I'm like, this is reminding me of something. Story time, uh, summer of 2016, I believe. What year is it now? 2018. Yeah, summer of 2016. Um, I was in Leeds over the summer. Home for me is near Liverpool, and I wanted to stay in Leeds because I wanted to work, and I was trying to get some more clients in and make some money over the summer. But clients were running dry, um, couldn't find much work, and I started applying to part-time jobs. And I felt pretty like um, 
basically I was applying to a lot of part-time jobs but was struggling to find anything and the more I applied to things the more desperate I got in terms of what I was applying to so I um, started applying to stuff that like I would tell myself I would do but really it's just because it was a chance at a job so I'd see you know job offers on like indeed.com um, and be like, yeah, I could do that, even though that's absolutely nothing at all what I want to do. Saw this one, and it's like, work your own hours, uh, pay is like, like very fast increased pay rate, like basically promised a lot of stuff, and it's like, sales job, I was like, oh, well, I could probably do with any more sales stuff. Applied to it. Get an email the same day. Hi Owen, we really liked your CV. Do you want to come in tomorrow? I'm like, oh, you know, drunk on my own ego. I'm like, yes, absolutely, I'd love to go in. And it's this weird little office with like a waiting room full of people. And they lead me into this meeting room and this lady talks about, do you know what direct marketing is? Basically, and then throws a load of numbers at me and talks about how lucrative a business it is and then talks about the fast progression scheme and... um the uh, the fact that people can open their own offices. I say all this just in case anyone ever hears this said to them in the future. It's a pyramid scheme. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. <laughs> it's a lie. It's all a lie. So they tell them all this stuff, talk about how much money I can make, Um neglect to mention that the work is 100% commission, neglect to mention that there's zero pay for my time other than that which I make through commission, um, zero mention of we don't cover your transport, zero mention of, uh, by the way, this is all self-employed, so we have no like workers' rights rules to abide with and things like that. Uh, like, you, if you want to be a, you, like, as a freelance, like technically we were freelancers because we were all self-employed. If you want to be here, it's on your own time. If you don't want to take a break, it's on your own time. Doesn't matter. You've decided to be here. Um, exploited, very very immoral industry. Very very sketchy. Um, basically the progression was grunt level, going on the streets twelve hours a day, um, trying to sell people subscriptions to. Uh, uh, like charities and things with iPads and stuff. Um, if you do okay in that, you become a team leader. If you make so many people team leaders, you become an assistant manager. Um, if you and then assistant manager's job, I found out is to just interview day in day out, non stop interviewing. And I realised that that's because people are literally there for like two days. Um, I was trying to prove something to myself in terms of what I could do and, and they, they paint it in a very like well it's up to you if you if you can't be bothered if you can't be asked then da, da. so I was trying to sort of prove to myself that I could do it my heart really wasn't in it because I felt like I was just pestering the public they were teaching me a load of like very sketchy very dated sales techniques about like um you know five steps to a sale rehash and like all this like, stupid stuff um, stuff that's quite immoral, stuff that's quite like manipulative. All these ideas of like get them on the yes train, stupid catchphrases. You want to turn and burn them. Turn and burn is where you look them in the eyes, you greet them, and then walk away so that they follow you uh, instinctively. So you bring them back to the table. So it's like a minor commitment because you've made them go off the track. Um, but yeah. So then you get paid like three weeks in arrears after they've had a chance to cancel. So I literally, for two weeks' work, I got paid like £100. That was it. It was ridiculous. They sent me to Land Dudno for a week, that second week, on a asterisk, uh, sorry, inverted commas, field trip, um, where I'm going to see, see rapid progression and increase my skills when really it was just we all pay, like we all have to pay to go and stay in some caravan, like eight of us sleeping on floors and stuff um, to go and do exactly what we were doing in a different place and it was just it was just rubbish it was absolute trash it was <laughs> it sucked um, I left I'll round off this tangent in a minute but 
just to give you an idea, a left when they told us that the pitch that we had been taught to use, which was all to do with we're trying to get um, first aid into the national curriculum, we're raising money, would you like to donate to us? Bear in mind, we aren't the charity, we're just, we're a direct marketing agency helping on behalf of the charity. I left where my team leader goes on that week in London now. You know that you know that that's not real. He said, you know that campaign isn't real. Um, it's all like it's just, it's all going in the same pot as all the other donations, but we're just making people commit to monthly payments. And it's like, that's scruffy, man. That's not nice. So I got out of there. Um, quit, went back to Leeds. Uh, just despicable, and and also like very very like Wolf of Wall Street atmosphere. All the all the even the grunt level people were sort of like eating up the, the stupid ideals that the managers would would sort of build into you through like you you do all like the chants in the mornings and get all hyped and like beat your chest and stuff and people were just rude. Like people all thought they were like young salesmen and were like being horrible with each other. Someone drove off. Oh, no, what what was it? So no, like so. Oh yeah, someone had to leave because the family member was ill or something. So we were down one car because she had a car. And the other group, who were like, w- like with us, effectively different team leaders and and a different manager had gone down with them, but they were still like our colleagues. We're like, no, we're not driving you to your location. I was like, mate. I'm trying to not swear on this podcast, but jeez, man. <laughs> yeah, really, really not nice. And, you know, the staff were like, didn't care. If you weren't turning out numbers, it was like, oh, you sort yourself out or get out because we can find other people. But they were just preying on, like, um, you know, 18-year-old kids not in uni and stuff and, and people who were like looking for work and, and yeah it was just it was just very very grotty it wasn't nice work at all a learning experience that was valuable for me because I realised what a pyramid scheme was and how manipulative, manipulative they are Um, but the reason I bring this up is because I was getting that feeling again in this networking group the idea of well you pay to be it, but you know you do as much work as you want, and you'll benefit from it because people will return it to you, and it's all sort of on goodwill. Like you want to just take it for. So if I do this work really well, people will just bring me leads. Okay, except they don't. This is the thing, they don't. And I'm <laughs> I'm sort of skipping ahead of myself because at, at the time the story went that I went to this thing very open mindedly, and I was aware to some extent of what I sort of expected. But I was very open-minded and I I was tempted by what people were saying about you'll make so much money so quickly, you'll you like you won't you won't create. So I had a couple of meetings with um mentors and, and people at uni and I said, you know, is would you trust this? Is this something that I should consider? The consensus was no. And that's what I went with, and the um, the decision to not do that has been strengthened over time. Um, I met at another networking event where I was doing a photo shoot. This lovely um, social media business, really nice girls. Um, they so we we've met for meetings a couple of times and, and planned different stuff. Um, we so her, one of the girl's dad is a big proponent or was a big proponent of this and they are part of like the the like another chapter um of this group and then we met again a few months later and I said so how's the networking going how's your networking group going and they were like hesitant they were like uh well and I was like, oh, God, here we go. Because initially they were really all about it. They were like, yeah, we've had so much work. We've had da, da, da. And then they said they said on the second meeting, they were like, yeah, to be honest, things have been, it's been, it's starting to like dawn on us now. Like, 
because their social media, all these leads get passed between themselves and, but, but, you know, between each other, but not them. So they're bringing contributions each week, but no one's bringing them any leads because, you know, what's, what's a mortgage advisor going to do with social media? Um, yeah, so... And then the thing that was, was quite upsetting to hear was her one of the girl's dad, who was a big proponent of this initially, apparently you can see like some some stats tables or league tables or something and see how much you've contributed. He was like number one for contribution and no one was bringing him any work. And he he had, he believed like the, the, the group effort and the goodwill side of it and the let's all help each other and was committing to that. And everyone else was just taking it, and and he's actually like I, th- I think he's left now, or he's he's not happy with it anymore. Or something, but yeah, this is the thing. If if you want to do this sort of networking, you've got to make sure that your business suits it. I have heard photographers get a lot of work through it, videographers get a lot of work through it. I see photographers and videographers I've got on LinkedIn very frequently posting about work they've got through it. I couldn't go in that capacity because my group had a photographer and a videographer, which was why I was there in the social media capacity. But also, if you're a vulnerable business, especially a student, and someone's telling you you've got to give away every Friday morning or Thursday morning or whenever it was, you've got to give away a morning a week to this group that you pay to be a part of, and you've got to do weekly work to earn your keep effectively like why do you have to earn your keep if you've paid to be a part of it do you know it's that idea it's that idea if if anyone ever says you know just in general i've i've always had a bit of a reluctance to people who talk about well if we all do it and it's like "Mm, i'm not sure about this because it's very very often not worth doing and it's it's it can be a very manipulative thing also so like me and a friend are working on a business plan at the minute which i'll i think i have another episode dedicated to me and my friend are working on another business plan at the minute and that was something where i contacted him and i could have been like the the money's there for the taking let's get it together let's both dig in all it needs is and that's all he said they always say come on it's only an hour out of your day. How much is that? Like they always sort of rationalise it. It's like, no, don't do that. Don't do that because people's time is important and stop trying to talk up your own idea. I, me and a friend are working on this business plan at the minute, but when I rung him and, and said to him, I want to talk to you about this idea, I took every opportunity to say to him, listen, I 100 million percent do not expect you to do an ounce of work on this. And I don't, want you to think that it's like I'm employing you or I'm a boss or like you have your you know you commit to it if you want to bail get out of there I'll pat your bags do you know like p- please please be open about the fact that if it's too much work you don't have to be but it's absolutely fine and you know you'll never catch one of these direct marketing agencies saying that or one of these networking groups saying that you know people will come and you'll get people will come without contributions, and you'll get ousted. You'll be like, "Oh well, are you gonna come? Ne- are you gonna ring one next week then?" You know, instead of basically the essence of it is the point of networking is to make good relationships with people. Remember that that adage that people buy you, they don't buy the business. The point of networking is to give yourself a foundation to build an actual strong, warm, professional relationship with other people. Doesn't happen when you when you're paying to be there. Do you know? I had a woman at the end of that event come to me and go, Hi, Owen, I didn't get a chance to speak to you. Um, My name is such and such. I, and this is why mortgage advisors in my head so much. I'm sure she was a mortgage advisor. Hi, Owen, I, 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 I'm a mortgage advisor. Here's my card. Like, it was so robotic. Like, she'd literally come up to me. I was in I was in the middle of a conversation with someone. She literally stepped up and just went, Hi, Owen, I'm a mortgage advisor. Here's my card if you ever need anything. And I'm like, look at me. I'm 20. <laughs> Do I look like I need a mortgage? You know, it's like the most 
it, it's very, very, very like everyone's just doing the dance of the sales pitch. And there's no thought as to who you're doing it to or why you're even doing it to begin with. People are just told that this will generate sales, so they're all walking up to each other going, hello, I do screen printing. Okay, cool, but I'm a lawyer, so why why do I need you? Like, it's robotic. It's like, it reminds me of, um, notice this thing about films in the 60s, where if you watch The Italian Job, listen to the dialogue and the conversations, you'll be like, why is everyone talking like this? People talk in 60s films like they're on a different planet. And none of the conver- like none of the th- none of the responses people have to each other's sentences actually make any sense. They're really weird things to say. Like they are they're all like it's like they've all been, had these pre-programmed conversations that have been run through like a like a Chinese translator and back. And then when you actually, you know, you've wound up these actors and you let them play out the, the scene, it's like Hello, go away. Bit feisty, aren't we? I just don't like chicken is all. Yeah, that's right. And it's like, what is this conversation at all? There's one, I mean, I'm rambling again, but there's one. I watched this film recently for a module called called Blow Up, 1966. Um. Michelangelo, Michelangelo Antonioni, Italian director. Um, it's very arty and very like sort of swinging London, swinging sixties sort of thing. And the the main guy is a bit of a prick. Like he's a so he's a London photographer. And the, the, there's a fair bit of like male power and misogy- misogyny going on. But one of the main scenes, he's taking pictures of this woman that he sees in in a park, and the woman chases after him, and she comes up to him and goes something like. Uh, stop taking photos of me. Isn't there any privacy left? And he goes, <laughs> Some people are doctors. Some people are photographers. That's my job. And it's just like, you, You've you literally just met each other. Wh- what? Why are you saying these things? Yeah, basically. It's that. Want to know what it's like going to a paid networking group? And watch the Italian job. You know? Now, um, the thing is, it's okay for some, but you know, go as a visitor, get a feel for it, see what it's like. But just in any any situation, just be wary of people saying, "Yeah, let's all chip in, let's all dig in together." Especially if the guy saying that is the guy who's like top of the ladder, which is what was happening in my meeting because. I was like, mm, you seem very rich, and I'm not, and you're saying it's great, and I don't know if it is. So, let's um, get to the analytical, not the analytical, that's, that's, my words wrong. Let's get to the, um, the takeaways and the points of growth. So, for this one on the document, my points of growth were analytical skills, I had to read the situation, critical thinking, I had to be wary of what people were feeding me and actually do some independent thought and not just take things for granted. And then ethical awareness as well. Ethical in, in the sense that I don't want to, um, you know, I, I care about creating the foundation of, of, of a good relationship with my customers. I don't want to, you know, use CD tactics to find my work, that sort of thing. And also it, it, a lot of the ethics stem from that experience in the um, direct marketing agency as well. So... Uh, The takeaway is promises aren't payment. As well as people might mean, nothing is guaranteed. Be wary, especially if there's a fee. So if someone, especially when someone's like saying, oh, do you want to pay, do you want to like, it's like, um, honestly, like young kids get get run into this all the time. Like you'll see them people who are trying to like advertise makeup brands on their Instagram and stuff. And, you know, you might have been one of these people. I had a girl that I had to put to in like literally years from my high school message me and go um, out of the blue one day at uni and was like uh, do you want to be part of this sports brand or something or like supplement thing I was like what um, yeah usually those people are having to pay just to do that 
look at like Herbalife, like you have to pay to buy the products and then sell them to your downstream and they have to buy off you and that's where the money gets made. And ultimately the guy at the top of the pyramid, which is what I call a pyramid scheme, the tech guy at the top of the pyramid is, is making the most money. Whereas usually you enter it like, you know, grunt level and you're just literally paying to buy stock that you can't sell. Um, protect your time. Push back against pressure to defend what you need. Time is your most important resource. Listen, you can be rich, you can be poor. Everyone's got 24 hours in the day. If you're poor and someone's asking you to sacrifice an hour out of your week, you got to ask yourself if it's worth it. Got to, you got to make that decision because time is valuable. you got to be so careful what you say yes to. And it's hard to say no, but it's so much more important. Uh, and then get second opinions as well. So just make sure that you know, you're know doing your research and you're, you're going out of your way to... Um, to just just make sure that the moves that you're going to make are the right things to do um especially you know if it's something as as large a commitment as this anyone who's invested you know your y- your your parents your friends teachers you know lecturers mentors whatever information you can get go for it you know go on go on reddit go on a forum if you need just ask the question yahoo answers you know um, so that's that's that for Owen Infiltrates the Secret Circle. Uh, managed to escape without getting branded or brainwashed, or um, unfortunately didn't get to take one of the uh, one of the gowns with me, uh, which is unfortunate because they were made of some very nice silk. But uh, who knows? I've got a nice um, pagan sacrifice coming up next week, so hopefully we'll get something out of that next week. Uh, week? I don't know. Is this a weekly podcast now? I suppose so. Um, next episode, it's going to be. Learning to Haggle, colon, the quest for gold. And this is quite an exciting one. It's all about asking for more money and going against my fears. And it's very, very, very current at the minute because I've just done that recently. And big learning experience. Very, very good. Listen to this if you want to learn how to push back. And you'll hear me wax on and ramble about why um, certain types of pricing are actually not very good and why you should go in high and that'll be that so i will s- that was rude sorry laptops shouting at me i will see you then